The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game. Public enemies who try to destroy our America. With his faithful valet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with racketeers and saboteurs, risking his life that criminals and racketeers will feel the weight of the law by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, Hornet drops a hint. The Green Hornet strikes again. And now, the Green Hornet. Smoothie Lawrence was everything his name implied. Smooth of speech, suave of manner, and smarter than most of his kind men who flaunted the law and lived by their wits. But on one occasion, Smoothie had been outsmarted by another man, and the law had closed in. That was two years ago, and for two long years he had paid his debt to society. Now, he was free again. It was dusk as Smoothie Lawrence entered the Water Street Cafe and walked over to the bar. His mind was filled with hatred for the man who had taken two years out of his life. And his face was grim as he stopped at the bar and gave his order. Give me a double ride, Joe. Yeah. Well, hi, yes, Smoothie. Double ride, come on right up. There you are, Smoothie. Thanks. You got things lined up for yourself? Before I start lining anything up, I have to get something off my mind. Yeah? I've been noticing you got something bothering you. That's right, I have. A dame, maybe? No, not a dame, Joe. I'm trying to figure out a way to get back at the double-crosser who caused me to be sent up. Yeah, I remember. The uh, paper said you was put on the spot by the Green Hornet. Yeah, that's right. Well, now you know. Holy smoke, Smoothie. You better steer clear of that guy. Forget it, Joe. I know what I want to do, and I'll find a way. See you later. So long. Yeah, so long, Smoothie. And good luck. Yeah. That's gotten to the point where I can't even keep my mouth shut. Uh, just a minute, please. I'd like a word with you. Who are you? What do you want? I was at the bar in the cafe... I overheard your conversation with the bartender. Really? Maybe you'll tell me just what business it is of yours. Take it easy, my friend. But I have to say it will be important to you. That remains to be seen. If this is some gag, or if you're trying to... Now, wait. Let me explain. My name is Max Zinder. I know you're Smoothie Lawrence. You get around, don't you, Chum? Of course. It's part of my business. What's your business? Does it matter? Listen, Zinder, if you... Now, wait a minute. Suppose I tell you I can show you how to make a large sum of money and at the same time get back at the Green Hornet. Would you be interested? Ah, maybe you get to the point. If you're interested, we'll go to my place and I'll give you the details. What have I got to lose? I'll go along with you. But let me tip you off to this. If you're pulling my leg, pal, you'll be plenty sorry. Let's go. A short time later, in an apartment on the west side, Smoothie Lawrence listened intently as Max Zinder outlined his plan. Now, let me repeat what I've told you. The attaché will leave that consulate at 8 o'clock tomorrow night on the way to the airport. You say the consulate car will be driven by one of your men? Uh-huh. That's right. 
course, at the consulate, he's known as a trusted employee. And I'm to follow in a car which you'll provide, huh? Yes. The driver of the attaché's car will pretend he's got motor trouble somewhere along the river road. He'll get out to work on it. And that's when I'm to take over. That it? Exactly. Get the papers the attaché will be carrying and bring them here to me. Of course, it'll be necessary to, uh, eliminate him. Now, hold on. Why can't I grab the papers and leave? Now, what's the he idea that... to tell about the so-called car trouble and the actions of the driver. It might lead to complications, my friend. After all, I didn't know I was... Now, remember, you'll be paid $10,000 cash for the job, Smoothie. And the Hornet will be blamed. You haven't told me just how suspicion is to be directed to the Green Hornet, Zinder. Look, here in my wallet, I have something that'll do the trick. See this? Ah, a Hornet seal. Is it really one of his own, or did you... It's genuine. It was left as a warning with one of our workers in the past. He was later caught because of the Hornet. So you have it in for him, too, huh? The Green Hornet is a continual threat to our organization. Why don't you pull this job yourself? In my position, I can't afford chances. You can, for a price. I'll be at a reception at the consulate tomorrow night. I'll stay there until the news of the attaché's misfortune is made known. So you'll be in the clear, huh? Okay, I'll go through with it. And leave that seal for the police to find. Ah, good. I knew we'd come to an understanding. Tomorrow night, I'll get those papers. You'll get the money. And your revenge on the Green Hornet in the bargain. What is wrong, driver? I don't know, sir. There's something wrong with the Well, motor. then do something. I'll miss my plane if we're delayed. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll have to stop. Hurry. We haven't much time. Oh, here comes another car. It looks as if he's stopping. Good evening. It's nice of you to stop, senor. We seem to be having trouble. Eh? Your troubles are just about over, Pat. Wait, I don't understand. A short time later, Britt Reed, young publisher of the Daily Sentinel, was in the city room when the phone rang. City editor's desk. Gunnigan speaking. Gunnigan, this is Mike Ackford. I want Ackford, to... where is under review, Ben? What's the idea of staying out all afternoon without calling in a... Li- I'm at Cops Headquarters and I have a story. Yeah? I thought so. That's your usual hangout. Now you listen to me, Ackford. I got a you... story, Gunnigan. A school. Let me get a word in edgeways, will you? Why didn't you say so? What is it? A murder. It happened on River Road. An attaché was shot by the Green Hornet. What? Hold on, I'll connect you with Rewrite and you can give the details. I ain't I... got any details yet. I'll call Rewrite later. So long. Why haven't you? What's the idea of... Hello? Hello? Oh, he hung up. That guy will drive me to the nut house. Somebody get to the composing room, quick. Tell him to set up a lead for an extra. Attaché murdered by Green Hornet. Hurry up. Right. Is that what Axford told you? That's right, Chief. Says the attaché was shot to death out on the river road by the Hornet. I see. Well, let me know the details as soon as you get them. I'll be in my office. Right. I just came from Cobb's headquarters. I phoned in the details on that murder a while ago. Yes, I know. I understand a hornet seal was found on the body. Sure. It was stuck right on the guy's forehead. Well, what about the chauffeur? He says the green hornet blocked the road with his car, so he had to stop. Then the spalpeen pulled open the rear door of the consulate car and shot the attaché in cold blood. The cops didn't hold the driver. Well, strange the driver was unharmed. Oh, the hornet would have shot him, too. Only the driver says he hopped out quick as a wink and lit out for the bushes with bullets whizzing alongside his head. Then another car came along and the harlot beat it. Where's the chauffeur now, do you know? After he told his story, they let him go back to the consulate. Tis a clear case against the green harlot to my way of thinking. Have the police figured out why the murder was committed? Indeed. It's off the record for now. But the harlot stole some important papers dealing with some matters in a South American country. Oh, I see. 
Well, keep on the case, Axford. And let me know of any new developments. Okay, Reed. Sure, and I'm thinking that Green Hornet's going to be sorry he pulled this job. Later, Britt Reed went to his apartment where Cato, his faithful Filipino valet and the only person knowing his identity as the Green Hornet, was waiting. Cato, because of that hornet seal which was found on the murdered attaché, the authorities are hunting down the hornet as the killer. It's not good. Well, they search for hornets, real murder have a chance to get away. In my opinion, aspiring is at work. Those papers are very important. And in the wrong hands can cause great trouble. That's also not good. Something has to be done and done quickly. Do you think of something, perhaps? If the driver of the consulate car is telling the truth, the killers have covered up well. But if he isn't... Do you think Green Hornet try to find out? Yes. The chauffeur for the consulate probably lives over the garage. We'll go there and see if there's a chance of breaking down his story. You go as Green Hornet in Black Beauty? Right. Come on. Stepping through a secret panel in the rear of a closet in his bedroom, Britt Reed and Cato went along a narrow passageway built within the walls of the apartment itself. This passage led to an adjoining building which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place for the sleek, super-powered Black Beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. <coughs> Britt Reed pressed a button. The great car roared into life. A section of the wall in front raised automatically then closed as the gleaming black beauty sped into the darkness. There's a light over the garage, Cato. Yes. We... Go in now? The sooner the better. We have to move to carefully. The police may have posted a man at the house. Come on. Moving through the shadows, Brett and Cato skirted the back of the garage and cautiously drew near the entrance to the stairway that led to the rooms above. They found the lower door unlocked and went up slowly and quietly until they reached a landing at the top of the staircase. This is it, Cato. I'll try the door. Well, that's strange. This door is unlocked, too. Well, here goes. Don't make him over up. What the? What? What's wrong? Great Scott. This is the consulate chauffeur, all right. But he's been shot through the head. He's dead. Where do we leave now? Something happening outside. Get to the window, quick. It's the police. Some coming here, others go toward place in the back where we hide the black beauty. I'll lock the door. What do we do now? We've got to think fast. They're coming up and we'll be caught like rats in a trap. And if they get possession of the black beauty, our goose will be cooked. But good. <laughs> Several policemen started through the door leading to the stairway. Two of the men rounded the back of the garage, and one of them noticed the dim outline of the black beauty a short distance away. Hey, look. Car back there. Come on, it might be the hornet's car. Yes, that's a car starting up inside the garage. Well, I'll be... He left that other car as a plant while they get away in one of the consulate cars. Let's get the others and get around front to stop them. Hey, Sarge! They're going to come out through the garage door as the car. Get ready to shoot them down. Shoot the lock off and let's bust in. That did it. Come on, open the door and jump back. Look, nobody's in the car. Keep your guns handy. Must be hiding inside. We'll get him this time. Come on. I'll drive. Look, it's a four for ski, Mr. Burke. Yes. Did you break open plenty of those gas pellets inside the garage before we came out through the back window? Police find garage full of gas. They not follow us for some time. Ah, good. 
Guess the killer tipped them off about another murder. That's why they came. We'd better get away from here now. Smoothie. I was worried about you. Nothing to worry about, Zimmer. In fact, luck is really playing our way tonight. How do you mean? Well, I attended to that job, getting rid of the consulate driver. I set my parked car down the block. And because of the reception, there were a great many cars parked along the street. I thought I'd wait until I saw you leave. She would have finished that job at eight. I left the reception after nine. I saw you leave. I was about to follow when a commotion started near the garage. They found the body? Yeah. You right? Oh, thanks. Light? Thank you. What happened then? This is the luck I was talking about. It seems after I left, the Green Hornet went into the driver's rooms and was almost cornered by the police. <laughs> Naturally, they blame him for what they found there. The body of that driver... Well, if you hear any more news about the hunt for the hornet, let me know. <laughs> I imagine he's a very puzzled man right now. Huh, Smoothie? <laughs> you said it. You're not so smart. I'm going out a while. See you later. So long, Cindy. Meanwhile, Britt Reed and Cato return to their apartment where they discussed the new development in the chain of circumstances which were closing about the Green Hornet. It's a great shock to know chauffeur also dead. Killer smart enough not to leave a clue behind. Maybe he's not so smart, Cato. What do you mean? I picked up this paper match cover in the chauffeur's rooms. Hmm? It's a, uh, Water Street Cafe on the cover. Yes. That's an underworld hangout. But that's not a very good clue. Many people get book of matches. Even driver, perhaps. That's true. But this belonged either to the killer or his victim. If the killer dropped it, there may be a way to track him. How do you do that? Cato, when we first came into the apartment, I went into the lab for a few moments, remember? Yes, sir. I found out there's a clear fingerprint on this match cover. Oh, you send the match cover to police, perhaps? No, Cato. If I send it anonymously, it wouldn't mean anything. I can't send it as Britt Reed and tell them where it was found. They'd be smart enough to connect me with the Hornet. Yes, that's true. You have other plan? Yes, I have. If the fingerprint proves to be the chauffeur's, the plan won't work. But if it's the killer's... You, you carry out the plan tonight? Why not? The reception at the consulate is over by now. And since the Hornet's scare, the police will have a guard there. You go to consulate and risk guard? Cato, my whole plan rests on upon reliable people being able to swear they saw the Green Hornet inside the consulate. I'll take that risk. Let's go. <laughs> Arriving in an alley behind the consulate, Britt Reed and Cato left the black beauty and moved into the shadows near the house. After some time, Cato spoke. We watched library window long time now. Yes, but we can... Look, the consul's getting up from his desk. He's leaving the room. Yes. There, he put out the lights. You go in in a few minutes? Yes. You stay outside the window in the shadows and keep the way clear for my escape. If anyone come here, I see him not in his ear. Good. The police are on the front porch talking. They don't expect the Hornet to be returned here tonight. So guards haven't been posted in the rear. We really don't expect the Hornet to return here tonight. So one of you boys can go to headquarters with me. The other, you, Cassidy, can hang around out here. Okay, sir. I guess the council's a little nervous anyway. Sure, but you can't blame him. With the guy being killed and all. Officer. Officer. Oh, what's that? Come quickly. There's a prowler in the library. Holy smoke. How do you know? I heard a noise in there. It sounds like someone at the safe. Cassidy, you go down to the library window in case he tries to get out that way. Okay, sir. You come along with me. Right. This way, officer. This is the door of the library. I'll sneak the door open a little and take a look. See anybody? 
Glory be. Someone's trying to get into the safe and using matches for a light. The light switch is just inside the door to the right. Okay. When I give the word, we're busting. Switch on the light and catch him cold. I'm ready, Sarge. Here goes then. No! What the? Sarge! It's a green hornet! Use your gun, quick! Slow cover! He's making for the long window! I'll get him! Hold on! Casualties outside! I'll go out the French window and see if he needs help. Hey, sir! Here's Cassidy, lying on the porch. What happened to him? I don't know. He's coming to now. Hey, well, what happened, fella? Uh, I was sneaking up onto the porch to look in the window when someone whammed me from behind. Uh, uh, come on, we'll see if he got into the safe. He didn't get the safe open. Good, Ed. Uh, he dropped a book of paper matches. I'll take it along. What good will that do? You never can tell. It might have a fingerprint on it. Though that hornet's been too smart to leave prints before. Yeah, but he didn't mean to drop that. That's right. I'll take it to headquarters and see what they can find. Let's hope it does show a print. Come on. Axford! Axford, we got it! Got what, Sarge? The name of the green hornet. That's what. Suffering snake, Sarge. Who are the smart crook by the name of Smoothie Lawrence? We found a fingerprint and it matches Lawrence. I can't believe it. Hey, you men. Get Smoothie Lawrence. Any of the boys call in yet, Cassidy? Well, they're still hunting, Sarge. We just gotta find Smoothie Lawrence. Hey, Sarge, I hear you picked up Smoothie Lawrence. Yeah, that's right. They've been grilling him for the past hour. Does he admit he's the green harlot? Not yet, but give us time and we'll make him talk. Come on, we'll see what's doing in there now. In here, Axford. I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. I never did it. All right, Sarge, take over. This guy's stubborn. Listen, you. We got the goods on you. What do you mean? What's all this about? We saw the hornet inside the consulate. He got away from us. But he dropped something. It had your fingerprint on it, which proves you're the green hornet. No. No, I'm not the hornet. And being the green hornet, you're due to hang. Oh, wait. Wait, I'll talk. Well, go on, then. The guy you want is named Cinder. He caught up the hornet gang. It was he who used a hornet's disguise and killed that attaché. Believe me, I'm not the hornet. I Where's that guy, Cinder? He lives at River Road in the brick house in the corner. Honest, he's the guy. He wanted me to help him, but I wouldn't do it. Sure. Come on, Axford. We'll get some of the boys and pick up that Zinder guy. If this mug Lawrence is the hornet, we'll soon find out. Let's go. Senator Ask. Cunningham, hold everything for a big story. We've been holding everything for the last hour and a half, Axford. What about that guy they picked up? Is he the horn of the What do you... you? The cops have just picked up another guy by the name of Zinder. And what do you think? Listen to me. I ain't waiting to okay, get... Okay, okay. Well, listen. When they got there, Zinder had a briefcase with the stolen papers in it. He was getting ready to clear out. They just brought him here to headquarters to pay a smooth alarm. But what the... I'll call you back right away so as to get the whole story. Stand by for a scoop. Hello. Hey, wait. Oh, that accident. Hey, someone get to the composing room. Have them get ready for a big lead. The killers have been found and maybe the green hawk. Later that night, Mike Axford entered the apartment he shared with Britt Reed and Cato. Yeah, still up, I see. Yes. I wasn't very sleepy tonight, Axford. Thought I'd read a bit. Have a cup of coffee, perhaps? Coffee? Sure, thanks, Cato. Uh, Reed, with all the excitement now, you sit there reading some love story, no doubt. Nope. A detective story. Ah, detective story, he says. Reed, there's more goes on right around your own office than you'd ever find in one of them make-believe detective books. Oh, really? No, don't tell me you don't know all that's happened tonight. Well, there's been some confusing reports over the radio about the police finding the Hornet. But police do a that... very good job catching Green Hornet. If man they catch is Hornet... Ah, stop pipe dreaming, Cato. Take the Hornet at all they caught. They're sure of that now. Oh, too bad. 
Now, in this book I'm reading, there's a mysterious character... Several which... snakes, you two ought to be stuffed and stuck in a museum somewhere, says I. Why do you say that? Yes, Axford, what's eating you? Well, I'll tell you. While you and Kate are mooning around in this apartment, one of the biggest stories of the month was breaking tonight. What? The cops got the killer of both the attaché and that driver. Not to mention finding the papers that were stolen. Say, that is news. That ain't all. They caught a big, they caught a big underground spy, and he had a little book with the names of all his helpers in it. Nazi underground agents. Imagine that, would you? Axford, that's wonderful news. But about the Green Hornet. Oh, what? it was him who double-crossed the other two. A spy leader named Zinder and a killer named Smoothie Lawrence. <laughs> they were so busy accusing each other, they all abide the Hornet on their murders. <laughs> then the uh, Hornet not kill at the shade? No, it was one of them guys poisoned as the Hornet. Of course, the Hornet was mixed up with him, but he put the finger on Lawrence with the fingerprints. <laughs> you get it? He left Smoothie's fingerprints. We get and the it. Well, the Hornet provided the Sentinel with another scoop, didn't he? <sighs> Read... Sometimes I wonder what you do without the Green Hornet to make the news for you and without me to tell you about it. Axford, without the Green Hornet, and of course you, life would be very dull. No, it's not something. <laughs> <laughs>